Okay, so the cylinders have been bored. Um, 10 over pistons and rings and everything should be tight. All new gaskets. So now the last uh, part of this video, we want to check the, the bottom end. Uh, as I explained, the, um, the bottom end should only have uh, <clears throat> one season on it from the, uh, the rebuild two years ago, so, and it looks pretty good. So one thing, though, we want to just confirm that our crank seals are holding tight. Um, <clears throat> it's one thing I think that's overlooked quite a bit. If you do uh, refresh the top end, uh, and you're, you know, not going to do the bottom end, you should at least check the uh, seals, make sure they're not leaking. And the way you do that is with a, um, a crankcase uh, leak down test. Uh, it's different than the top end uh, cylinder leak down test that we did in the second part of this video. But you do need to have the engine <clears throat> all fully assembled because uh, <clears throat> you can't have any leak paths that would go up through the cylinder and out through the uh, exhaust or, or the intakes. Um, and you can see that the exhaust is wide open here. But what we're going to do is I have a, um, <clears throat> a blank plate with a hose barb in it. We're going to install that here with the, uh, <clears throat> the O-ring gasket that comes with the, the seal kit. So that'll go on there, seal that tight, <clears throat> and then for the um, the intake boots, you can see that there. I have one of those on the other side sealed already with a PVC cap. I found a one and a half inch PVC cap fits here just perfectly, and you can tighten the clamps, and that'll give you a good a good tight seal. So once we do that, <clears throat> what we'll do is apply air pressure here. Now you could do it just about anywhere um, through an, one of these intake uh, caps and that'll pressurize obviously the cylinders, but it'll pressurize the crankcases and you'll watch for uh, the pressure to hold steady. Uh, if it leaks down, then you've got a leak somewhere, and the only place that leak could be is in the crankcase seals. Um, the pressure for this test is low. You don't want to blow out the, the seals. Um, the manual calls for 5 PSI. So I'll show you my rig for um, hooking up the air pressure. Um, <clears throat> and we'll do that next. All right, so here I have shop air, and I have the air compressor regulator set at 5 PSI. I've got a shutoff valve, and that is teed to a line going into my, my blank plate. And in the other end of the T, I have the uh, gauge. <clears throat> and I had to get a, a lower reading gauge so I could see 5 PSI better. Um, normally your compression test gauge and your fuel pressure gauge, they're going to be uh, probably, you know, 200 PSI and you're not going to be able to see the 5 PSI very good. So everything should be tight. We're going to go ahead and apply the pressure. So I'm going to open this valve slowly. All right, so we've applied 5 PSI. And I have closed the valve over here so that I can isolate this system from the supply. And we'll watch that for a couple minutes. The manual talks about uh, three minutes for this test. Um, 
I don't hear any hissing noise. Um, one thing I would like to point out is it helps to think about where this air could go uh, other than leaking from one of your, your test fittings or around this test plate, etc. Um, if that's all tight, uh, there's only a couple places for the air to leak out. Um, and that's once you've done your, you know, your, your top end leak down test. We know that's good. So inside the crankcase, on the front end, you have the front main seal behind the, uh, the magneto flywheel. And any leakage out of that front main seal is actually going to be captured in the, the magneto uh, cover. You could leak out of the rear main seal, and I would expect any major leak to be hissing here. That seal obviously is exposed to the to the outside. Now for the inboard seals, there's really two places for that air to go. The air would go into the oil-filled cavity for the uh, counterbalance shaft drive gear uh, and into that whole cavity that the counterbalance um, is, is inside of. And that whole cavity is sealed, but there are two places that it's vented. So one is the oil fill plug, which has a small hole for a, a vent line. And that vent line um, is routed up beneath the low side of the engine here. And it's one of these hoses. And where that hose goes is right here. It's got a check valve and it's teed into the exhaust side of the the rave solenoid and any uh, air venting will go to a hose that actually goes into one of the the intake uh, boots so if you're leaking air through there you could pop those hoses off and you could listen um, that hose is actually down here in right here it goes into the throttle body so it's open to atmosphere if there is any leak. Um, <clears throat> the other area where the counterbalance cavity could be leaking is the bottom drain fitting, oil drain fitting. That's that small fitting on the bottom of the very bottom of the crankcase, and that line is over here. That line runs up and will eventually tie into the uh, top of the the oil tank fill and it's just a uh, return line that returns any oil into the uh, the tank so I think we're looking good it's been a couple minutes and everything seems to be holding tight so I think the uh, <clears throat> assumption that our bottom end is good was a good assumption and I think we have a tight engine um, and we're going to eventually do the, uh, we're going to run it. We're going to do the compression test, make sure our board job was good. And we're looking for 125 to 130, 135 PSI there uh, on a DI. All right. So really we've, we've done everything we could do to prove that, our direct fuel injection system is tight and operating properly. Our top end is good, it's tight, it's fresh, and our bottom end is, is tight. So we should have a really good engine here, and we're going to finish putting it together, and we're going to run it for you. All right, we have our test fitting hooked up. Here's our gauge. Okay, and fuel pressure fluctuating a little bit, but bouncing around about 110, 
107 is where we want to be, so that's good.